got actually a really good photo in the paper, and it really makes a good statement. But only if the room, only there's a lot of people in the room that are on your side. <laughs> Everybody stand up if you're the only one standing up. Not a good idea. <laughs> um, and then, uh, um, yeah, so you could, you know, send them a thank you note when you're done, you know, when you're done meeting them, uh, things like that. And then, uh, um, you know, this all sounds like, you know, we're, you know, you know, kind of like suck up, but that's not what it's about. So never cower, you know. We will find legislators and there will be people, you know, um, we all know who they are, who are going to be totally insulting and who are going to be um, completely mean and mean-spirited and, and hurtful. And, um, you know, the biggest thing is to take a deep breath when that happens. Take a deep breath. You'll be amazed at how then, you know, you won't be triggered so much to speak. And just give your, you know, your heartfelt reply. But remember to take the long view. Try not to create a permanent enemy if you, if you can do it. The last one is to try and have a sense of humor about all this stuff, okay? It's really important that we have fun while we do this. Um, I mean, you know, it... Uh, because uh, we need to sustain ourselves for the long haul of years of doing this stuff. Um, and so have a sense of humor if you can, you know, if you, if you can. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's a strange world up there in Carson City. Um, it does not, uh, it's, it's, it's doing better in terms of reflecting the state. Um, but we need to make sure that we continue to bring people to Carson City um, with us to train the next generation of lobbyists, to train the next generation of legislators. I always say if you're driving to Carson City alone, you're driving with the Eagle Forum. It's one of those uh, things that they did in World War II to get people to drive with people, saying that it was a picture of, of Hitler in the driver's seat, and it said if you're driving alone, you're driving with Hitler, meaning You've got to have people with you to drive to save gas. Just like you've got to have people coming with you to Carson City um, to make a difference and um, train them on how to do this lobbying and how to find out where the doors are and where the access points are and how legislation moves and, and how to get the job done. So, um, you know, the Lone Ranger's a real bad idea and we're all in this together. So, um, go ahead. So, um, why don't we just go into pairs right now and talk about anything about lobbying that you think you might really enjoy, anything that's going to make you uh, really um, not, not enjoy so much, all right? And we'll spend about four minutes on this. Some of the legislation impacting our community right now. And, um, uh, but, uh, Getting our message heard, you're the ones that are going to get more attention, and especially from your your, your own assembly person and your own senator. Um, they will pay attention to you a lot more than anybody else will. So to the extent that you can contact them and be in touch with them and know who they are, I mean, it's great, you know, working the long haul, make sure if you like them and they're doing a good job, go door to door with them, you know, in the next election. Really get to know them well. Um, the, uh, there's different ways to contact them. Emails now are not working so well. I'm with 500 a day. Letters that are faxed in, maybe. Calls that are, calls are good. Always make sure you identify yourself, and especially if you're a member of their, um, uh, of their, of their district. And then target legislators. You know, the whole gang of 63 is great, but you know, if we're trying to move one vote on commerce and labor, and it's this person, we need to really focus on that person. And so it's really much better for you to call people who live in that district and say, hey, we need you, you're in Senator so-and-so's district, could you please make a phone call to them or send them an email or send them a fax on a letter. So targeting is really quick, is really important. Always ask for their vote. Um, and then not, um, Always better to uh, talk to the sponsor of the bill when you're when you're ready to make a compromise or when you're ready to accept a compromise than it is to than it is to surprise them in the committee with some networks. This distribute jobs according to talents. Not everybody likes to lobby. Not everybody likes to sit down, you know, and, and lobby legislators. There's a whole bunch of other things that needs to be done. Database stuff is really important. List enhancement. Every organization should have, you know, hopefully lists. 
um, that identifies who their voters are and where those voters live and whose assembly, who their assembly person is, who their state senators are. And that's a really good job for people. And then to contact those members and say, hey, you know, lobby your own members as opposed to the, the, the legislators. Um, you know, uh, fact sheets with a repetitive message, showing the base of support, preparing for the opponent's arguments, you know, trying to figure out what they're gonna say and to blunt those arguments before they're, uh, they're wielded, all right? So, so let's look at these different, uh, different um, definitions. <coughs> message, that's the point that we're trying to convey to change hearts and minds of the target audience. Talking points, the set of ideas uh, that are gonna get these folks to change their minds, hopefully. A sound bite is something, a uh, short and catchy quote between five and 15 seconds when you're doing interviews. Now there will hopefully be some press up there. There will be some press up there. Anybody could get stopped. And I'm of the point of view that everybody should be ready to give their 15 to 30 second sound bite. The question mainly is gonna be, why are you here? Why do you care about this? And you should be able to answer within 15 to 30 seconds why you're there, why you care about it, and we'll go into that. Terms, this is from GLAD. Um, uh, so use gay or lesbian, don't use homosexual, all right? Uh, use sexual orientation, don't use sexual preference. Use lesbian or gay, don't use gay lifestyle. Uh, use equal rights or equal protection, obviously don't use special rights. This is an interesting one um, that I wasn't aware of, but uh, until I you know, did this workshop. But their advice is don't use the term gay marriage. Use the term marriage for gay couples. So those are some, so just some ideas. Language is really important, words are really important. And, um, uh, and also in terms of gender identity issues. Um, use transgender, don't add the ED at the end. Um, use um, sex reassignment surgery instead of sex change operation. Um, hermaphrodite is not a, a, a word to use. Intersex is the term. Um, uh, Cross-dressing is the term as opposed to transvestite. Um, and, you know, tranny or trannies, not, not good. Um, uh, transgender is the preferred term. Any, any questions or feedback on that so far? We've gone over. All right. Um, so now we're going to talk about developing your personal talking points. First thing is to see now just about who we're trying to reach here. You know, in any campaign or in any, you know, uh, trying to get moved public opinion, there's going to be probably about 30% of the people who are not going to be with us no matter what, all right, no matter what we do. There's about 30% of the people who are like us and who will be with us that we have to continue to you know, lock down and be in touch with and stuff like that. But their, their minds are made up, too. There's that 40% in the middle. So when we talk about crafting a message and what language to use and what words to use, that 40% is in the mushy middle. And how well we tell our stories and develop our talking points can make a difference in terms of how they swing. So. Uh, let those talking points, when you're reaching that, that audience, come from personal experience. Your parenthood, your work, your faith or spirituality, your coming out, your family, whatever. Um, also be specific, you know. It's really, some of those stories that were told at the hearings where people talk about how long they've been with their partner, uh, how long they've lived in the uh, community.